Hello beautiful people, welcome to Flushpost, please subscribe to see unique content. We are now at 100,000 subscribers and I am just elated to know that so many of you ladies are finding my videos helpful. You're really now able to look at your life and make changes to make it better and that is invaluable to me. So thank you so much for all of your lovely feedback, your comments, your DMs, your emails, just all of your lovely words, they have truly touched me and I'm just so thankful that you're here. So I wanted to bring you a video today that would hopefully help you to be inspired to take another look at your dating standards. Unfortunately, so many women go through the dating process without really understanding both what they want and how they expect to be treated because they're equally important and we tend to spend most of our time with our list of the things that we want them to have and how we want them to look, but we don't focus enough on the way that we expect to be treated and what happens when they don't treat us the way that we want to be treated. So I want us to take another look. I'm going to ask you three questions and I just want you to reflect. Just ponder on it. You don't have to react right away with a response. Just take another look at yourself because truly that's what standards are connected to. The way that you feel about yourself and what you think you deserve and how you allow people to treat you. So go ahead and get something to drink, get something to write with, and let's jump into the video. As a woman, when you have standards, you do not bend the rules. You don't bend the rules because of environment, desperation, or convenience. And I want to give you a little illustration to kind of picture what I'm trying to convey. Imagine you and your best friend took a really long hike in July during the summer. And after the hike, you're both exhausted, you're parched, and you're looking for some water. So you're walking and you realize your house is only three minutes away. You can wait until you get home, but you and your friend look for a gas station. As you're walking, you pass by a public water fountain and she stops and drinks water. And she's like, oh, are you going to drink some? And you say, no, I didn't even see it because I don't drink from public water fountains. I'm not, I didn't even notice it was there. And she's like, girl, you're going to pass out. You're going to die. You need to drink this water. And you say, I don't drink from public fountains. I'll wait until I get home. That's an illustration to show what it looks like to have standards and what it looks like to settle. And unfortunately, we as women are settling too much too soon. And usually it's tied to other issues, other reasons, insecurity. So I truly believe as an adult when you're in the dating process, you should be doing things like journaling, possibly going to therapy, having outlets, and just doing a lot of self-reflection so that you don't make the same mistakes and that you heal from any past traumas or past abuse that you've endured. All of that is necessary before writing this list of things that you want. I will talk about standards again. This is not going to be the last video, but I just want to kind of pinpoint some areas that I see women settling in, certain circumstances or environments that I think bring this out of people. So what I mean by that is some women settle because they believe that they're not worthy based on certain things going on in their life. So for example, maybe a single mother settling, thinking that no one's going to want her because she's a single mother or because she has six kids, no one's ever going to want to marry her. Sometimes it's because she had a promiscuous past and she thinks that because of the decisions that she made with her body and allowing men to use it, that she's no longer worthy. There are women who have done things like committed a crime. Maybe when you were younger, you had a DUI or you stole and you think because of your criminal history, you're only allowed to date people who also have them. So you settle for people that you wouldn't normally want to choose, just thinking that you would want someone to choose you or settle for you. And that mentality is what gets us into trouble. So it's important for you to really take a look at your life, a look at yourself, and think about your worth and your value. And if you believe that when someone gets you, they're getting something valuable. Once you're in the dating world, it's going to expose all of your insecurities and it can sabotage your relationships if you're not aware. So try to be self-aware and do all of the internal work before you really get yourself in a committed relationship. Mm -hmm. 
Why are you dating? Are you dating because you think that you should be dating? Are you getting pressure from family or because of your age? Are you dating because you feel lonely and you're looking for some fulfillment in your life? It's very important for you to determine why you're dating because that's also going to direct how you choose your standards. If you're dating for fun, which is where most women really end up getting hurt the most, you're not going to have direction, okay? And you're going to allow things that are going to possibly hurt you long term. So really analyze your reasons behind this. And I want you to honor your desires. So if you want to get married, then honor that desire and get out in the dating world and get married. Don't allow society or your friends or other people make you feel like it's a bad thing to desire marriage. That's a wonderful thing. You have to understand what you're really getting into, what it means to be married, and if you're ready for that life shift because it's not easy even though it's wonderful. So you have to understand, but never ever limit your desires. And don't say things like, I don't want to get married because you're not having success dating. When you put that negativity out there, it clashes with that energy. And if you're trying to seek something, you won't be able to attract it if you're putting out that energy that you don't want it, even though you do. Most women want marriage. Most women desire it. It is natural. So don't feel bad about it. Okay, honor your desire to be married, but know what it really means to be married. Another thing I want you to consider is what do you want and can you handle what you want? Are you built for what you want? Is your personality mature enough for what you want? We always come up with this list of great qualities that we want in a man or even fairy tale qualities without looking at the other side. And number two, what it comes with, what the sacrifices are on your end. So if you say, I want to marry a surgeon and you want your man to call you every hour on the hour to make you feel secure, you can't marry a surgeon. Okay, they're not going to be able to do that. It's just not possible with their job. Or I know a lot of women will say, I want a man who's a provider, which of course, that's what you're supposed to have. But people will say, I want a man who spoils me and buys me gifts and takes me on vacation. But they don't know how to receive. I posted this poll on my Instagram and I asked ladies if they have a hard time receiving. And these were the results. So if you want all of these great things, but you have trouble receiving, inevitably the relationship will sabotage because you'll do it. You won't feel deserving of those things. So you have to do the work internally. And if you want certain things, then you have to develop the things within yourself to be able to enjoy those things. want you to think about your thoughts about men. How do you really feel about men? Do you really like them? Do you truly think that they're good people? Do you think that they're all dogs? Do you think that there's no good men out there? If you're dating and you have a lot of negative thoughts about men, it's going to show up in the relationship or in the dating process. They're going to be able to sense that and it's a turn off. It also brings harm to someone who came in with good intentions to court you and didn't anticipate this entanglement and all of these hidden issues. I want you to have a positive outlook on men, on dating, on love. I want you to understand men and how they operate so that you can know how to operate with them. But I want you to also have a positive outlook towards dating, towards love, and towards your own abilities to navigate that. Do you know your worth? Do you believe it? Do you really believe that you're valuable? It's not a man's job to convince you of your worth. You have to go into the relationship feeling and knowing that you truly are valuable and know the value that you bring to his life and the value that you're bringing to the world as a woman. As a woman, you are priceless. 
The value you bring to the world is worthy of you being treated delicately. You're the one that puts the price tag on yourself. In terms of your worth, you're the one that tells people how valuable you are. You're God's child. You're perfect in all ways in his eyes. I want you to dispel all of the thoughts that you have about yourself that are negative or just destructive and start seeing yourself the way that God sees you and truly believing that. This is the most important question because this is going to change the outcome of your dating experience. What are some things that you will not tolerate under any circumstance? When you write the list of things that you want, you should have certain things that are circled as non-negotiable. If they display this, or if they have this, or if they are this, I'm out. And a lot of women get stuck right here. One of the main reasons why we women settle so often is because we meet people who have qualities that we've never maybe experienced. And so we make exceptions or we start having hope and things like that. So for example, maybe you're already dating someone and he does something for you that you've never experienced. Maybe he wants to take you to Cancun. You've never been on a trip with a man before. So you're super excited, but while you're planning for the trip, you catch him one day doing hard drugs. And you told yourself, one of your non-negotiables is that you won't date someone who does hard drugs but you've never been on vacation before. So you wanna go, right? And that's how we lower our standards and say maybe after the vacation, he asks to borrow money. And that was one of your non-negotiables that you will not date men who ask you for money. But because he took you to Cancun, you feel like, oh, maybe he's good for it, right? I don't know, I mean, he did do this nice thing for me. Let me loan him his rent money. No, that's how we get caught and lowering our standards, okay? You have to know what your non-negotiables are, the things that you will not bend for, regardless of the situation, and do not tolerate it. I know I've gotten questions about what my standards are or what I believe your standards should be, and I do not believe that I should tell you what you want as a standard. That should be your own decision. But one of my non-negotiables is that he has to be a Christian. Personally, in my experience, spirituality is essential. It's important for me to align myself with someone who is accountable to a higher being. They're not accountable only to me or only to my dad, their dad, my mom, their family. They're accountable to God. That spiritual connection with God is so important. I want to align myself with someone who answers to a higher power. That spiritual guidance, that spiritual leadership is what's going to ground us and help us in our lives. That's a non-negotiable for me, but you have to create your own and be comfortable and sound in them because you're going to be tested. They're gonna test you. It can be the best man in the world. He's still gonna test you to see if you value yourself the way that you want him to value you. So I hope this video was helpful to you. It's very important that you consider everything that we discussed in this video. I want you to just sit back and reflect and unpack all of this information and see how it fits into your standards. I love you ladies so much and I'm so thankful for all of your support and your love and your connection. I hope that you all stay safe and stay healthy and I will see you in the next video. Big kisses, Mwah. Peace, love, and light. Thank you for watching, please subscribe, and follow Fleshpost on social media.